Well, this is a load graph weight and balance, and we're going to review how to do this, so we'll pass the FA written test. You're going to see two charts. First, the one on the left, and I've got here the individual components here of, of the weight and balance, for example, the fuel and the front seat passengers, rear, etc. And we'll, we're going to add up weight, add up moments. We'll get that all from this first chart over here, and then we're going to plot it on this chart, the one on the right. And if it falls inside that shaded envelope, I guess we're okay to fly. So let's get to it right now. Well, let's go with this um, fictitious weight and balance here using the table method here, just like your FAA test questions. Now, I've got it color code, make it a little easier. You're, well, you learn it here, you'll do it black and white fine. My hypothetical airplane weighs in at 1,403 pounds. I've got front seat passengers of 359. That's you, the driver, and the person next to you. You're a passenger or co-pilot. 37 gallons of fuel and 180 pounds in the back seat. I guess you just had room for one. And you've got 90 pounds of gear. So let's get to this weight and balance so we can be all good for our FAA exam. Um, first thing I'm going to do is change this because I've got... See, I've got pounds, weight in pounds on this axis, the vertical axis. But I'm going to be using a horizontal axis, uh, which is the moment. That's inch pounds times a thousand. On this scale, this is 15,000 inch pounds. This is 20,000 inch pounds. So I want to represent this a little bit more differently. I'm still going to call this 1,403. But I'll call this 60.8 because it represents 60.8 thousands of inch pounds. Uh, a lot of students make a mistake on that one, so just let's just make sure you get that done right away. All right, now to this table. If you haven't done this before, so I'll follow along. Anything along here, you can see this for every one of these weights, which of course has a different location in the aircraft. We've got a different, let's say, slope here. They're all linear relationships. That is, if I were to do this, if I represent the weight vertically and the moment horizontally, I can see that I have got a linear relationship as I increase weight, moment increases, just like that. Now, you can do this your, well, let's say on your paper with a pair of rulers, those little six inch paper rulers. Because in this first case, you're given front seat weight of 359 pounds, as close as you can get it up to here. And that's where you are. This line would be 360. That's about as close as I can read it. And then all you've got to do is read down vertically to your horizontal axis. Now, read this carefully. Remember, this is 10. There's 10 spaces here to 15. So this is 11. Count two more. This is 12. Count two more. This is 13. So what you've got here for a moment, you've got 13.0. Point zero, yes, you need to be pretty accurate. All right, fuel. Again, well, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. You hide that. Now fuel again, same thing linear relationship, a little bit, um, a little bit greater moment with that weight. But gallons, it's gallons, get rid of gallons. I know I'm doing weight and balance here, not doing fuel consumption. So I know I've got 37 gallons, which is at six pounds per gallon, which you should know as your specific gravity, roughly for your fuel. And it's going to be the same in your, pretty close to your car and your airplane. So that's 222 pounds. Move that out of the way. And let's put this down here in weight. After all, this is a weight and balance. Same thing. You've got your two rulers. You're sliding them up here, 150, 160, 70, 200, 200, that's 220. Part weight, a little bit more. Yeah, I should have gone a little bit farther. And that's your 222. I read here, now this is where it gets interesting, 
This is 10. This is 10.5. This is 11. This is somewhere in between. I, can, I would expect that you would read that as about 10.7. And you should see that. If that's 0.5, and that's the next unit, that's about 0.7. Right, practice with your eyes. You should have good eyes anyway if you're flying airplanes. So now, there we go. We've got two of them done. Let's keep, let's move along here. Let's go to the next. Now, this one's, wow, big effect sitting in the back seat. Imagine. Oh, and, and uh, I haven't mentioned it earlier. You notice it tops out here at 400 because, of course, you're not allowed to have more than 400 in the rear seats in this particular weight and balance model. So right there, that's your maximum capacity. And we are looking for, what are we looking for? Well, we have 180. We said we didn't have room to take all our heavy friends because we were running out of weight. So we said, oh, let's get down there to 180. Come on. Yeah, this thing's stuck. And we come down here. That's 150, 160, 170. 180. And you should be getting better at this. By now I could, or I could count backwards from 15. That's 14. And you should see that that's pretty darn close to 13. So there's your 13.0 point aught. And that is going to be your weight and moment for the rear seats. Now, just one last thing. And where's that baggage thing go? There's B for baggage. And I'm going to move baggage along like this. Say 50 pounds of baggage down here, 60, 70, 80. There's about 90 pounds of baggage right there. And you can see, let me see, that's, well, right there would be nine. A little bit below it would be 8.5. So, you should be able to read that at about 8.6, 8 and 6 tenths. Get good at reading these graphs because it is important. So now we've, I think we're done with, we're done with all that. And all we got to do is break out the calculator, which I've already done for you. So add these all up. We're going to add them all up. And I believe 22.54 for your weight for your takeoff weight, and I add up. This is the beauty of the table. We add up all these moments, and we come up with this number. There's no dividing. We don't, now, we could take, we could calculate our average arm, but eh, we don't need to. We're going to move on with these two numbers, move on to the next graph. Now let's take our totals right here from the previous graph and apply them to this graph. And this is, of course, the envelope which tells us that we are inside an acceptable CG. And some things have changed. Scale over here is in hundreds of pounds, 1,700 pounds, 1,800 pounds, or 1,900, 2,000, etc. Over here, we're still in thousands of inch pounds, 65,000, 70,000, 75,000, etc. Now, let's see. We're going to plot these two numbers, 2,254. Now, if there's five divisions here, of course, we're counting by 20. So, 2,220, 2,240, 2,260. 2,280, and 2,300. So clearly, in this case, we're between 2,240 and 2,260. Closer to this line, of course. So that's where, those, that's where you'd expect to be. And over here on the horizontal, there's 105. Here is 106. The point one would be really, really close. So if I were just plot that roughly, I'd say, okay, kind of here, a little bit down there, maybe right there. That looks pretty darn good. Um, and that tells me this aircraft is okay. And just further, uh, let's suppose I put my aircraft here. See, that would, that would tell me an aft CG. Let's say I had ended up somewhere over here. That would have been a forward CG. And if I was over here somewhere, 
that would have been overweight. But like the three little bears, here you go, just right.